Praise God. I want to thank everyone for your various comments on the various videos out there. Um, videos on both YouTube and Facebook in what God is doing, you know, in this generation and in these last days through you and through me and even your family, the healings, the deliverances that are going on out there. I want to give God all the glory. I want to thank you. I want to believe that God is going to increase you to higher heights in Jesus name. Today quickly without delay we'll be uh, discussing and also praying on against every spirit of delay, every spirit of but, every spirit of but. Like for example, um, comments like she's a father and sister, she's prayerful but she's not married. She's prayerful but no man Asks how she's doing. Nobody looks at her. Nobody knows if she's existing. We're going to be addressing such issues. We're going to be praying about them. We will address the physical things that needs to be addressed. Then we'll address the spiritual things that needs to be addressed too. You know, I uh, had some questions that I needed us to pray about and to and to ponder over and also pray concerning our lives. Is what's the use of the sun when the sun is not shining? What's the use of the sun in the sky when it's not shining? What's the use of the salt when it has lost its taste or is not giving the taste to the food? You needed it, the, the function, but it's not performing the function of which you want it to perform. What is the use of a living water within you when it's not flowing out? Many of us have lots of visions in us, but it's not flowing out. Many of us have lots of dreams, but it's not. Those things are not flowing out. Innovative ideas, but they are not flowing out. What is the use of those things? You know, sometimes, ah, she's a beautiful sister. Uh, they're a great family. They fear God, but she's been barren for the past 10 years. She's been married for the past 15 years, but ah, she's having issues with giving birth. By the grace of God, we will be addressing such matters today. And we're believing God that there will be total healing, deliverance, transformation in the name of Jesus. Transformation in the name of Jesus. And first of all, before we're able to address some of these issues spiritually, we need to address some matters. I need to have an understanding so that when we pray, we will see the answers coming to us easily. According to God's word, the Bible says, whatever you ask in the name of Jesus, you shall receive. It is written, it is settled. It is settled the way it is written, it is settled. There's no argument. There's no power in hell, power in the heavens that can argue God's word. Because the word of the Lord is yea and amen. I want to start for my first reason, reading from the book of First Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4. From verses 9. We'll start reading from verse 9. It says, There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth was, had been so painful. He was the one who prayed to God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted him his request. Sometimes we become so comfortable with our Christian life. We say, take the whole world and give me Jesus. Yes, she is born again, but the Bible says, whoever the Son of God is set free is free indeed. Freedom has no but. Freedom is freedom. Liberation is liberation. I'm believing God that after today, we'll be totally liberated in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that this Jabez was so honorable, more honorable than his brethren. But there was a problem. That even in the honor, look at the contents of his prayer. He said, oh, that you will bless me. His being honorable did not stop some of his blessings, if not all of his blessings. And it says, expand my territory. Some of us, we 
Our territories are being reduced to nothing. We are honorable, but when we talk about territory, what span of God, God's glory do you enjoy? What level of God's presence do you enjoy? God's blessings, God's favor do you enjoy? Until you become uncomfortable with that comfortable position, you can never be skyrocketed to your destined destiny. Until you become uncomfortable with that comfortable position, you can never be skyrocketed to your God-ordained destiny. You are destined. You are destined. And that brings us to something very important. You need to understand your destiny. Understand your purpose, your existence. Why are you here? Understand where you should be per time. When you understand where you should be per time, what you should be doing per time, why you are there per time, then you can function now in time. You can function in time and you can become very effective. We're going to see that in the life of Jesus. But still back to this, the contents of Jabez's prayer. It says, please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, but he had pains. The Bible says the name came as a result of the pain experienced by his mom, his mother. Are you a Christian? Are you born again? But you still experience pain. You're born again, but you notice there's a limit to your explosion and expansion in life. You're born again, but you can't feed. You're born again, you can't clothe yourself. You're born again, you, you, you have nothing. You, you experience total poverty. You will break forth today in the name of Jesus. But first of all, you need to be uncomfortable with that comfortable position. Unfortunately, some people accept that position. Even though the position is, is like the list of where they should be per time. They accept it and they relax. God wants the, you to catch that fire and, and, and be uncomfortable so that you can bring forth. Bring forth your destiny in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, out of you, out of you shall flow what? Comfort living water, shall flow living water. What the devil has succeeded in doing to some of us is that the living water is there. Yes, you hear the, the rumbling or the rumbling, the rumbling. But it's not coming out. Today, every delay, everything, keeping stagnant, holding back, you're bringing forth, holding back the flowing of the fountain within you. We bind and we cast them out in Jesus' name. Receive the fire and let it flow out in Jesus' name. Receive the fire and let it flow out in Jesus' name. You, 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 you have great things, great potentials in you, but they are not coming out. Despite your, your, the, the titles you have, it was more honorable. But the contents of his prayers shows that this man was experiencing pains. Pains as a result of name. Do you know sometimes many Christians suffer under reproach. Reproach from what they've done in the past. Yes, they are now born again. But because of their life in the past, they say, as you know that sister that bought it some years ago? She says she's born again. She did this some years ago. He says he's born again. It wasn't that, that, that guy that used to steal would destroy the powers behind every reproach in your life in the name of Jesus. The power behind every reproach that are affecting your approach, your approach in life, that are affecting your approach in life. Every reproach that is affecting your approach in your, in your life, every reproach affecting your approach in your life in the name of Jesus will destroy the powers behind them in Jesus' name. God says he has given you a new name. Receive that new name in Jesus' name. Every reproach. Yes, when you, were, uh, when you were an unbeliever, you used to abort kids, abort, abort children, but, but, but abort fetuses, fetuses. But now, you are born again. And the devil, the accuser of the brethren is standing, depriving you of your womb, receiving, receiving, receiving the seed 
God promised in the name of Jesus. Every accuser of our brethren that have made you comfortable with that position of being called barren. The Bible says there shall be none barren in the land. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Receive your children right now in the name of Jesus. Receive peace in your family in the name of Jesus. The Bible says though it was more honorable, but it was he had pains. And he said, enlarge my coast, enlarge my territory, enlarge my coast. I want to ask you out there, Christians, if you're born again, how enlarged or how large is your territory? How much of God's favor do you enjoy? How much of God's blessings do you enjoy? Every day you dream, you see yourself traveling to many countries, doing great businesses, but all still remains in a dream. You fall under the anointing in trance. You see yourself doing great things. You see yourself meeting with presidents all over the world, but still in trance. Today you shall break forth from every trance. You shall break forth from every dreams in the name of Jesus. So you have to be uncomfortable with that comfortable position that I have defined you. Some of you already know you. That is what they call you. Sister, it is well. Oh, you can hear from that sister, it is well. But nothing is well about her. From today, it shall be according to your word in the name of Jesus. According to the word you've spoken in the name of Jesus. Number two, you have to know what you're designed to be. An illustration here is that once like I said in, in one of the videos in the past that I did, once an instrument loses its function, it becomes useless. But once an instrument knows and is knows its function, then it becomes useful. What is your function? Number one. Your function on earth. Number two, your function in your family. Number three, your function in the ministry, in the body of Christ. If you are able to define who you are, then you'll be able to know who to get married to, when to get married, and, and where to be per time. Both in ministry, both in marriage, both in blessings, both in giving. You, first of all, who are you? What are you called into? When you know who you are, then you once you can define who you are, then you can know better your enemies. If you don't know who you are, then it's very difficult to know who your enemies are. Because talking about what powers, how do you know you're a world power when you don't know yourself? How do you know you're a daughter of Zion when you don't know you don't know you, you don't know what what your territory? You need to know your territory. May the Lord open your eyes to know your territory in Jesus' name. To confirm that, let's look at the book of Luke 4 from verse, verses. I want to dwell from verses 16 to 18. It says, when he came to the village, when he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah, the prophet, was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll and handed it back to the attendant. I want to draw us, our eyes to this part of the scripture. It says he unrolled the scroll. The Bible says this scroll was handed over to him. Do you know in life, God hands over our gifts, our destiny, our potentials, our blessings to us. But we don't, we don't open them. It's like a scroll of life given to you. Scroll of blessing given to you. The Bible says the scroll of Isaiah, the prophet, was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. He found the place. 
Life is like a research. It's given to you by God. But until you open the life through the word of the Lord Jesus and through the blood of Jesus, you, won't, you will lose out of God's blessings and inheritance for you. The Bible says he opened and then found the place where it was written in the book. In that same book, in the place where it was, was written, it is written, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. What has been written by God for your life, for your marriage, for your family, for your children, for your destiny, for your purpose? There shall be a broken fort today in the name of Jesus. There shall be a breaking fort today in your life, in your destiny, in the name of Jesus. Every delay in marriage, let there be a breaking fort in the name of Jesus. But before you can attack your enemies and know where the devil is acting against your delay in marriage, against your financial blessings, against your spiritual work with God, against your prayer life you first of all know who who are you who are you who are you who are you who 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 what 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 do men jesus said what do men say i am because he already knew who he was meant to be by god from the book of luke 4 if i ask you who are you who are you what will you say where are you supposed to be per time? Are you in the right place God wants you to be? Do you know before Isaiah heard from God and he said, Jeremiah, send me? He was already prophesying. Why would God still be looking for who he would send when Isaiah was already prophesying? Sometimes you may be prophesying somewhere, you may be doing something somewhere that God, God will be asking, Who is that? I don't know him. But in the right time, Isaiah heard, he saw the Lord and said, here am I, send me. So the first thing Jesus did was to open the scroll and found the place where it was written concerning him. What is God written about your life? You can't know it until you go into the scriptures. You can't know it until you get closer to God. You can't know it until you develop a relationship with heaven. Every spirit of bot in your life, let them be taken away in Jesus' name. Yes, you are more honorable, but let it be taken away in the name of Jesus. Now, like I said earlier on, what is the use of the sun when the sun is not shining? What is the use of, of, of a living water inside when it's not breaking forth? The Bible says, out of you shall flow. Out of you shall flow. Every power that have delayed the flow of the gift you have inside, let them be destroyed in Jesus' name. Where's the use of salt? Because it becomes so useless, it should be thrown away. You can't use it for any other thing. Because salt needs to have its taste. May your taste be re- restored back in the name of Jesus. Now, we're going to go through, through some scriptures and then we're going to pray. But with those of you experiencing delay in marriage, before we go attacking the devil, we need to know if we have a, some problems around us, in us, with us, that we need to address first, before we can go after the accuser. Before you can destroy the ac- ac- accuser, you need to uh, make sure you address every form of accusation, because is it possible you're guilty? There's something about spiritual laws. You don't jump them. You address them. You don't jump spiritual laws. You address them. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord was hovering around the air. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. The earth was formless. And needed a form. And God spoke. And the form came. So the Lord will speak over your life today in the name of Jesus. I just want to read the scripture. Because I'll be praying specifically for a lot of people today. First Peter 2, verse 11. It says, Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from the worldly desires that wage war against your very soul. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your, you are honorable, behavior and there will give the honor to God when he judges the world. 
keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your soul. The enemies of our soul is not just the devil, but the flesh. The flesh warred against your soul. Yes, you're single. How is your sexual purity? Are you keeping to yourself or you're messing around? You're messing around every day and you're praying, God, I need a life partner. Do you know that when you are already having sexual relationships everywhere and uh, you're praying for life partner, in the spirit, the people you've slept with, the devil stands accusing you and says, oh, she already has partners. How can she be praying amiss? She's praying amiss. Because she already has partner. And because of that, your prayers don't go beyond the ceiling. But for you to experience God's faithfulness and bring the right person to you, you need to address that part of your life. Pray for deliverance and cut off. You have to do some things physically. Cut off such relationships and pray for grace to keep to yourself for the right person. God will not allow, allow, allow two men to marry one man. Marriage is deeper than physical. It's spiritual. Intercourse is spiritual. When you have it, you, 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 heaven and hell witnesses it. There's a witnessing. So you have to cut off. If you want your, your life partner, cut off from destroyers of life partners sleeping around. They are destroyers of life partners. Cut off. And also cut off from every canopying brothers or sisters. Someone you know intending to get married to and you're so matured and all what not and they are the ones always seen around you. Cut them off. Because the devil is an accuser of the brethren. He can use anything to discourage God's purpose in your life. Every works of the flesh, cut off from them. Let them go away. Because the war against also your soul. And right now, since we've addressed that, I want us to go straight to addressing the powers. Every power that troubles us. You're going to break forth today in the name of Jesus. You're going to break forth today. You, you will receive your shine in the name of Jesus. You receive your thirst in the name of Jesus. Out of you shall flow that living water in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, all I need you to do is to say amen to every prayers I pray. But we're going to look through the scriptures in Ephesians 6, 12. And it, it reads uh, thus, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the devil in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing fair. The Bible says that we we'll wrestle not against flesh and blood. Many times the devil deceives us and makes us feel that we are all alone in this world. So everything we do, we just blame our neighbors, blame our friends, blame our pastors, blame our parents. And we, we, we think of suicide as the end point of it and all what not. But Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against evil powers that rule it even in the heavens. These powers try to block our prayers. They try to block our prayers, our intercession. I want us to be praying. Every powers from your family line that is choking up God's grace in your life, let them be destroyed in Jesus' name. Every powers causing delay in your marriage, delay even in childbirth in your family. In the name of Jesus, let them be destroyed in Jesus' name. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Every power that is not flesh, that is not blood, that is overing against your family, overing against your destiny, overing against your promotion, overing against your elevation, let them be destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus. You are a pastor out there. You are not noticing growth in your church. Every power of reproach, every power from your village, every power from hell troubling you in the heavens, on the land, in the sea, every weapons fighting you, let them crumble forever right now in the name of Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4. 
We are human, but we don't wage war as humans too. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. To knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to and, and, and to and to to knock down strongholds. Sorry, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. Do you know that human reasoning in the realm of the spirit builds some blocks? It builds either spring balls to spring you to the next level or it builds block of hindrance against your destiny. Human reasoning. No wonder the Bible says as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your thoughts are spiritual materials that helps propel you or make you retrogress in life. What do you think? I need you through the washing of the water by the word of God. That's why the Bible says uh, in Psalms. Let's let's look at the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter one. Psalms chapter one. My under Santa, gracious God, thank you, Jesus. Psalms one. It says, "All oh, the joys of those." Who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but the delight in the law of, of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. Can you see that what you think, what you meditate on in the realm of the spirit becomes a spring block or a, a, sp- a springboard or a block, a fence against your life. Some of us are slaves to our thoughts. That's why when you ponder on immorpornographic things in your dream, you dream and you see yourself having sex in dream. When you watch pornographic things, those are the things that recreate. You notice you start losting. Your mind is the bedrock for building your destiny. What do you do with your mind? The mind is meant to meditate. When the devil attacks, he attacks first your mind. Bible says a fool says in his heart there is no God. The devil first of all goes to your mind. The mind is a, a battleground. Why? Because the mind is supposed to be the bedrock for, for every form of growth, both spiritual, material, financial, emotional growth. What do you entertain? You need to meditate on God's word day and night and from the meditation comes growth. From the meditation will come what elevation. From the med- med- meditation will come will come glory. The glory of God will shine over your life. The Bible says that to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning. That's why sometimes you know reproach comes from the devil brings this reproach and men accuse you. You're being stigmatized. You're being given a name. You need to destroy those blocks. That's why I say every reproach. Repeat that from me. Every reproach against me from the past, from my past mistakes, because of the blood of Jesus. Let the powers. I arrest the powers behind them. I set them on fire. I cast them out in the name of Jesus. Every reproach affecting my approach in life. Every thought affecting me. The Bible says casting down every imagination. Imaginations always rises up. They either rise up as a ladder for you to climb over others. Or they rise up as a block to enter your prayers. Enter your moral living. Enter your spiritual stand. Enter your material stand. Some of you, even when God is speaking, that miracle is all yours. You've received your healing in Jesus' name. Your imagination, the devil goes there and, and, and become and, and make and make the foundation of your imagination sandy so that when the word of God comes there, instead of you allowing the word of God to use your mind as a springboard, a springboard, your your your, your mind becomes a sand that swallows up the word that makes it to sink. Then there's no foundation. The Bible says we destroy every, in verse 5, we destroy First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. It says, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. Pride, in the realm of the spirit, these things are objects. They are materials. Thoughts, evil reasoning, they are materials that stands against us in the realm of the spirit. 
But I have a good news for, for all of us out there. And I want to read 2 Timothy 4.18. We're going to pray now. Yes, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil attack. I will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. All glory to God forever and ever. Amen. John 16.33. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. It says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Praise God. God has overcome the world. And now we're going to be praying prayer of restoration. You are out there, you're experiencing delay in your marriage. This is the right time we're going to pray. And by the grace of God, you experience miracle in your life. You will get married in the name of Jesus. Every reasons that have kept you from getting married in the name of Jesus, they are destroyed right now in Jesus' name. Have you experienced delay in blessing? You have you in your dream, you see a lot of things with things God has promised you but you are not seeing them coming to pass in the physical this is a prayer line we are going to stop every bot in your life every spirit of bot every spirit every spirit of shrink territories every spirit every block that that has risen from your imagination every barriers from your imagination that have stopped your spiritual your blessing everything about your life the spiritual stand with God in the name of Jesus there shall be an upliftment in your life in Jesus Jesus' name, shall we pray? Everything I say, as I pray, just say amen and to be yours in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My Father, I pray for everyone out there. Every single ladies, every single man out there. Some of the men, oh God, are ripe for the age of marriage. But Lord, there's no source of financing. Father, there's no stream of finance to their life. In the name of Jesus I ask, first of all, Lord, that, Lord, you forgive for as many that are out there, oh God, that because of their past, oh God, they have, they, the devil is accusing them. Let the blood of Jesus speak for them. Let there be a washing by the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Let there be a washing by the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Let there be a washing by the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Father, I speak against every powers that have delayed their marriage, that have delayed their marriage, every power from their household, every powers from the heavens, every powers from the land, the sea, the wind, Every evil powers have conjured against their progress to break forth in marriage. I bind you, I set you on fire in one agreement with the Holy Spirit and those people out there in Jesus' name. I say receive favor, receive favor. Every blocks, every blocks, barrier in the spirit that have delayed your marriage. Let them crumble and destroy and be destroyed in Jesus' name. Every barrier that have de de delayed even your finance, that have delayed your breakthrough in life, let them crumble and be destroyed in Jesus' name. Let them crumble and be destroyed in Jesus' name. Let them fall like the walls of Jericho in Jesus' name. Father, Lord God, I pray for that woman